Let's try it again. Okay, now I'm live. I messed it up the first time. Hello, I'm Betsy Bird. Uh, this is the 2022 Best Picture Books presentation with Betsy Bird and Brian Wilson. Hello. 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 I disappeared. He gone. He's gone. Okay. Um. So before we go any further, we would like to read a little uh, land acknowledgement to begin with, because we are recording this at the Edmonton Public Library. So this is our land acknowledgement that we tend to read before all things. Before colonization and settlement by people of European descent, the place we know as Evanston was home to the Potawatomi, Odawa, and Ojibwe tribes, also known as the Council of the Three Fires. It also served as an important crossroads and meeting place for a number of other indigenous tribal nations, including the Ho-Chunk, Illinois, Inoka, Kickapoo, Miami, Menominee, Peoria, and Sac, and Fox nations. We acknowledge and honor the original people of this land, as well as the indigenous people that still call this area home and support their continued work for justice, self-determination and sovereignty. In doing so, we honor indigenous protocol and remind ourselves and our community that land acknowledgements do not exist in the past tense. All right. Well, what we have for you today is a very special presentation. All year, uh, Brian and I have been working on the 101 Great Books for Kids list. Uh, seen, oh wait, it's not in the front. Seen here, um, where our staff come up with some great things. But Brian has had this presentation of great picture books going on long before I came to Evanston Public Library. Damn. So he's been very kind and he is allowing me to take part uh, in this. And for that, I thank you very much, Brian. Thank so you. no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we are going to start off with Brian talking about a lot of the books that he is very excited about that came out in 2022. And then I will talk about a lot of other things that I got very excited about in 2022. And that's how we're going to do it. Sound like a plan? Sounds definitely. Sounds All so right. Fun. Sounds fantastic. All right. I'm going to hand this over okay. to you. Then. Oh, I know. The power now. Thanks so much. I'm controlling Facebook. You're Facebook totally is mine. In charge of I'm Facebook just now. kidding. I'm not. And as he talks, I'm going to try to uh, put comments in the Facebook of what the books are that he's talking about. Yeah. I'll try to hold up the cover so people can see as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, I want to give a special shout out to Anne's Book Club. That was a little group of um, caregivers, preschool teachers in the aughts that um, asked me initially to present this starting back in the late aughts. And Rick Kinnebrew, who used to work at the Evanston Public Library as an outreach librarian, um, who invited me to speak to them. So it's been kind of going on for quite a while. And when Betsy started here, I invited her um, on her blog, uh, A Fuse Number 8 Production. She gave a shout out to this presentation without one. She wasn't working here. She didn't know who I was. And, and so I thought that was really cool that she gave this presentation a shout out. So that's why I invite her. So we've been kind of Yay. ever since. Yay. All right. I am going to present my favorites in alphabetical order by title with some exceptions or a couple of there are some surprises along the way. And so the first one I want to present is Barry's Song by Michaela Goad, who is the Caldecott winner for We Are Water Protectors. This was her first book as an author as well as illustrator. And it's just absolutely beautiful. It's about um, a grandmother and child. Um, and it's the Clinket tribe and up in Alaska. And basically it's about foraging. Like they go out, they look for berries together. There's a connection with the land, with each other. And along, along the way, there's a song um, that with all the different berries names in there, just beautiful, beautiful shots of nature in it. What I love about this book is at the end, you see the, the child teaching a younger sibling um, about it as well. I think I'm going to move a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Okay, there. Okay. Um, and basically it is like a, a, an older sibling teaching the tradition to a younger sibling as well. And that's what I love about it. There's excellent back matter in the book. And it's just, just absolutely beautiful. One thing that really connects a lot of the books this year is this sort of, there's a lot of nature books, a lot of getting back outside, um, experiencing the outdoors. You're probably going to see that a lot with a lot of the books I'm presenting. I don't know why that's, that's just seems to be a trend. 
the next book, if you want to do a drum roll, at I don't home, know. yeah, if you want to do it at home, even, um, is Big Truck Little Island by Chris Van Dusen. Um, he did like If I Built a House, If I Built a Car, and of course the, the Mercy Watson books. I love this book because it's based on a real incident. There was a little island off the coast of Maine where a truck got stuck. And in this book, in this version of the book, what I love about it is it introduces a bunch of kids in various cars who need to get somewhere like to, to dance practice, to a sporting event. And you see, and Chris Van Dusen um, is very economical, like shows like the thought bubbles, like I need to get here. And you can see the kids thinking about where they need to go to. And the, the adults are panicking, the truck driver's panicking. As you see here, the poor truck driver <laughs> um, was very Chris Van Dusen. Um, and you, know, you see the truck that's stuck. What's great about this book is that the kids come up with the solution. And I won't spoil what the solution is. You know, if you've read the book, you know what the solution is. But it's absolutely wonderful, like how they they come up with it. Very hilarious illustration. Like this girl's thinking about her stinky dog. They're trying to get to the dog, you know, clean up the dog here because it needs to get to a bath. And, you know, just very comical expressions. Here are the kids coming up with their plan. And it's just also I a lot of what I recommend works has worked for me in story times. And this book, as you can see, has great giant, giant illustrations that show across the room. And when I did this for a preschool group, we spent a long time after the kids talking about different ways they would have helped, how they would have helped the truck become unstuck. Their solutions were awesome. Just back up, go really fast, jump over the truck, <laughs> stuck, the stuck truck. It was just just amazing. Um, so it kind of like, it's a good prompt. It, it, it kind of like, how would you have solved the problem? Yeah. All right. Next book is probably more for older readers and it's blue. Um, and it's by Nana Aqua Bruhamen, um, illustrated by Daniel Minter, who's a Caldecott honoree for going home, to, going down home with daddy. He's just becoming one of our favorite illustrators. I mean, he's just phenomenal. And this is a really interesting book because it takes the color blue and it goes through a history of it, a very global perspective of where blue came from as a color. And his illustrations are just, just absolutely gorgeous. I know there's a glare on the page a little bit, um, but get, make sure you see this book and, um, and look at the illustrations up close. He, you know, just beautiful. And her writing is so gorgeous in this book just very lively and very evocative. And also it taps into blue as a feeling, like the blues and singing the blues. And it doesn't sugarcoat history, it gets into the history of enslaved people and how they were used to, to get the color blue out of various sources and indigo. Um, and in, what I also love about the book, and, and yeah, here it looks like it's all blue, but uh, is how sometimes blue is used sparingly on the pages. So there's a lot of green on this page. So then the blue really pops out. So it's just absolutely um, a fascinating book. It's an unexpected book. Like they take this topic and go different, different ways with it. It's just really, really a great book, probably for older readers, but you know, but just a great, excellent book. The next book is Climb On. And it's by Baptiste Paul and it's illustrated by Jacqueline Alcantara. And this book is really, really fun. Again, it's an outside book. They're going out. There is a child who wants to get out and do some hiking, do some climbing. And the parent is reluctant. And I love that it starts right off. You see the child climbing the parent, like, you know, and the parent's like, oh, oh, today, really? Today, really? And throughout the book, there's a dynamic with them that the, the child's like running, you know, far ahead. And meanwhile, the parents like, I'm trying to keep up. No, don't grab that vine. Please don't swing. No, you know, that kind of thing. And it's really hilarious. And um, I also just love the dimensions of the book. This team worked on a book called The Field, which is um, about football, you know, soccer. Um, and the dimension was very rectangular and um, it really looked like a soccer field, like a football field. This one has, high, you know, it goes up high, like they're climbing up, they're climbing up. We're looking like we're so high above them and we're seeing the birds, you know, from above. Um, but just really great. We get a lot of requests for books that are set in the Caribbean. 
and um, and this is um, a Haitian book. There's words in Creole here, and and Baptiste really brings like a you know his own experiences from living there. And Jacqueline did a lot of um, research on what the landscape looked like. It's just an absolutely you know just a beautiful book. Oh, there's there's the child swinging. You know, it's really great. Cool. And so I mentioned Jacqueline Alcantara. I'm going a little bit off the alphabetical thing here. I'm going to give a shout out to two. Evanston-based, Chicago-based um, authors who had really great books this year. Um, brand new Bubby, Bubby um, by Sarah Aronson, illustrated by Ariel Landy. Um, it's just really, really, really fun. And it's about a, a child that gets a, you know, has a new, um, I guess, step-grandmother <laughs> and has to get used to her and doesn't really want her around, but it's, but then learns to love her. And there's a lot of food in the book. Don't, don't read it when you're hungry because you're going to want to really eat. It's just a really, really great book. And Sarah is just such a great writer and such a great advocate for other writers as well. She's, you know, really involved with SVWI and she's fantastic. The Most Haunted House in America is by uh, Jarrett Dapier and illustrated by Lee Gatlin. And this is based on a real experience. Jarrett, who lives in Evanston, I've kind of known him for a long time. Um, he, is a drummer and an amazing drummer. I saw him in a show once, um, he was fantastic. And he was invited by the Obamas to play at a Halloween festivity. Um, and basically there, he has himself as a skeleton in here and with his buddies. And basically what he does is that after everyone leaves and they're left behind, they find out that the um, White House is extremely haunted. And very lively illustrations, very fun. It's good for like Halloween story times. And Jarrett's use of language is just fantastic. He's an actor. So he always, like he told me once that he rehearses his books while he writes them. And it gives the um, storyteller a lot to, to play with. So two, two shout outs to Evanston based. Other, I mean, yay, Evanston. More nature. The next book um, is The Depth of the Lake and the Height of the Sky. This is just absolutely gorgeous by Kim Jiwon. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It's wordless. Um, I love um, really intricate art, <laughs> um, like art that when you read the artist's note, like how they created this art, um, it's amazing. Like the te her technique is incredible. But basically it's about a boy who has traveled um, to a country house, a rural house, and has um, kind of taken a little bit of a path to the lake. Well, thank you. Okay. And, um, and just the expressions and just being in nature and kind of like, you know, very sepia toned and just excellent, very, very immersive, very immersive illustrations that probably aren't like maybe, you know, showing as well on the screen, but when you get it, when you see the book and then you read about the technique, um, you just can't help but feel impressed. Um, it's just an absolutely gorgeous book. Speaking of more nature, um, A Mill and the Field. And this is by poet Kevin Young. And the art is by Kiyomo Ebanama. And I absolutely love this book. And what's really cool is that, yeah, she lives, she doesn't live in the United States. I believe she lives in Germany. Um, but she is Caldecott eligible because she um, was born in the United States. Um, but this is a book about a boy who loves a field so much near his house that, you know, he doesn't want to share it with anybody at the end. But it's it, and his father teaches him at the end, like, it's OK to share what you love in nature with other people. It goes through the seasons. The poem is absolutely beautiful. Um, and as you can see from the art here, it's just very immersive. You can feel this book. You can smell it. You can you can hear it and you can see it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. And there's a twist at the end that's actually, there's a little tribute to um, Snowy Day at the end. There's like a little image that reminds me of Snowy Day. Um, and it's just an absolutely beautiful book, A Mill in the Field. Kids love firefighters. They love fire engines. And at the end of the year, this year, we had not one, not two, I'm sorry, not one, but two, <laughs> not one, but two, um, tributes to amazing firefighters. Fire Chief Fran by Linda Ashman, illustrated Nancy Carpenter. I really love that. What I love about this book is that she isn't just like putting out fire. That isn't like the whole typical, 
we see other things like them giving like tours to kids um, and, you know, basically helping people after um, like they got two kids run into each other to, at a sports game and they have to get some treatment, like a little ice pack to the head. What I, and then what I love about it, it shows like a whole day of, of the firefighters and it doesn't just focus on like the mundane and like what you've seen in a lot of other fire engine books. Like they're, they're helping with a downed tree in one part. And there's this really lively, bouncy text that um, um, I did this for story time. Um, they loved it. They loved the, the doing the clang, you know, the clang, 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 and the word fast is repeated. And they and they just really like um, just found it very exciting. And it's really good. And also Firefighter Flow is fantastic by Andrea Zimmerman and uh, pictures by Dan Yaccarino. And this is like even for like um, younger, you know, um, the language is 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 very very like like fire chief Fran has maybe a little little more text in it, and it's just very um, just again very fast paced. Danny Acarino's illustrations are just really show across a room beautifully, and you know just the graphics are really crisp and clear, and the writing is just fantastic. As you know, Andrea Zimmerman is just fantastic at at putting in sound effects and and inviting audience participation. Another wordless book, Forever Forever Home. And I want to thank Betsy for putting in the, the text. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Forever Home, A Dog and Boy Love Story. This was a great year for Henry Cole. He had another book called Building, which is all about beavers. What I love about this book is it's about a boy who wants to be a pet owner. He wants a dog. And, but he has to learn some responsibility. And his dad's um, show show him like you know your room is pretty messy you know how are you going to take care of a dog if you know if you can't even take care of your own room so he has to kind of this kid has to prove that he can be a good pet owner what's really interesting too is that oh there's some funny stuff I'll talk about this funny stuff in, mm -hmm. in a second um, but there's a dog there is a dog throughout the book of course it's a boy and dog story um, and the dog we see what the dog is going through and their stories come together. The boy and dog stories come together. What I love about the book is Henry isn't afraid to make a lot of it funny. The dog, the boy wants a dog so badly that he walks an empty leash, which I guess is kind of maybe sad, but it's also really hilarious too. But I just- He looks love... really self-satisfied with it though. Actually, like, it's like, does... That's an expression of great pride on his face there. Yeah, yeah you're very, very self-satisfied. That's a great one. <laughs> That's a great way to explain it. But I just love how he learns responsibility he, and he's rewarded at the end. And that's what kind of makes it kind of almost like up there with the best pet ownership books. So Forever Home. The next book is Gibberish. I love this book. And it it's about a child who comes to a new place where he doesn't speak any English. And what Youngvo does, and at the beginning they show him arriving like by boat, by plane, and then he arrives and what Young does here um, is really interesting is that to show how the child doesn't understand the language, he uses these kind of like icons, these like unusual icons. He also has the people look kind of like old fashioned 1920s, 1930s style animated characters. So, so it kind of gives you that a little bit disorientation. So it kind of shows us from from his point of view, what it's like to be in this world. And so you see him struggling in school and Young Boat really knows how to use panels and knows how to use um, quick snippets and, and graphics to show the passing of time or to show disorientation. Also throughout the book, there's this um, friend and a beautiful touch is that as they start connecting more, she starts changing. Like she doesn't look like a 1920s animated cartoon anymore and starts changing. And it's just really cool visual touches. Um, I did this with a group and there were kids who just love this book a lot. And that's gibberish. And next one, Growing an Artist by John Para. This is a personal story. Um, uh, John fictionalizes the story though. He um, It's more about, you know, a, he introduces it as a, a different character than himself. But when um, John was growing up, his his Mexican father was a uh, landscaper, and 
basically takes him around and shows him what he does. And John, who loves, um, not John, the boy who's at the stand-in for John, okay. um, loves to draw already. And the, the family sees that and they bring him in as an artist. And um, he starts creating blueprints um, for the designs, like practicing how to do blueprints. It doesn't sugarcoat the story. The boy encounters bigotry. Um, there's a lot of classism in the book. And also, um, you know, this this kid is just kind of look, looking down on John Standen. And basically, what I love about the book is that his talent is embraced. He learns. He's brought into the family in that way. And I love how the family celebrates his book, um, his, uh, his work um, as an artist. So growing an artist. And the next one, I'm Not Small by Nina Cruz. This is a really, really um, seemingly simple book. Nina, as you know, Nina, as you know, mostly does like, like kind of stylized photographs. If you've seen a lot of her books in the past, but what she does here is like digital art and it's, and it's but very textured digital, digital art. And it's about a boy realizing that some things are smaller than him and some things are bigger than him. And it's done in a very like straightforward, you know, with a very straightforward text. And I just love how the concept is really just really clear. This tree is bigger than me, but I am bigger than this bug. Um, just very clear. Um, I did this in story time and, and the kids, the kids really related to it and they really liked it a lot. So I'm not small. I think it's time for another drum roll. Yeah. All right. I can do that. A little tribute to Frank Morrison, who has, he's just, it's just been an incredible, incredible year for him. I think he's had like three or four books out this year that were absolutely incredible as an illustrator. Um, in this case, he's also the author. Um, when I saw Frank talk about this book on a, on a webinar, he talked about how this was based on a real story where he wiped out on a skateboard in front of a group of kids. And he thought it was hilarious. So he made, <laughs> he turned it into a book that's actually about self-empowerment and about, um, about you know, connecting with a new group of friends. This boy is nicknamed Epic and he's moved into a new neighborhood. He has killer skateboard moves except when he's now in this new place, things just go wrong. He falls and he stumbles and he feels like he's lost his self-identity. Like he's, he's like, oh no, am I still this amazing epic skateboarding person? And then the second half of the book is him, his father, oh, his parents give him a pep talk. His dad gives him a pep talk. And then he goes out, he's doing his amazing skateboard moves and kids start noticing him and they um, and he starts realizing, oh, there he is, dreaming, dreaming about his skateboard moves. But he's out there. Oh, yes. And he tries different sports. It's absolutely hilarious. Oh, I love those sports. Yeah, very, very funny. <laughs> that's yeah. me trying sports. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's yeah. definitely me. That's yeah. Whole, definitely. That's a whole definitely thing. the football part. That was yeah. That yeah. was my mm -hmm. junior high experience right there. <laughs> and being flattened. Oh no, there he is. Well, there, there, there he is. Yes. <laughs> Still getting used to this camera. There he is. All right. Um, he's you know, um, but I really love that he he finds that he can be true to himself. His parents give him support and he makes good friends at the end. And it's just just a beautiful book by Frank Morrison. All right. Drum roll, please. Yeah. <laughs> this is Luli and the Language of Tea. And it's by Andrea Wang, who um, received a Newbery honor last this past year for Watercress. And it's pictures by Hewan Yum. And this is another book like gibberish. It's a book about a, a child who ends up in a situation where she doesn't speak the language of the other people. In fact, this is an English as a second language class. It's kind of hard to, whoop, there we go. An English as a second language class where no one speaks the same language. And Luli finds a connection between everybody and that's T. You know, and uh, the, yeah, I mean, I'm not spoiling it. It's called Lily and the Language. <laughs> but it's but I just love how like people are often like school teachers and um, preschool teachers are looking for books about community and and kids connecting with each other. And this is just an absolutely beautiful book, where you know the child comes up with a solution, and it's very warm. The illustrations are just very like warm and round, and um, and they kind of like everyone just kind of comes together. And um, so I just, you know, just a beautiful book. I did this for story time and they, and they just absolutely loved it. 
This is a last minute edition. I just added this book to the presentation this morning. Um, Me and Muhammad Ali by Jabari Asim, um, illustrated by A.G. Ford. Another running thing I'm seeing like presenting these books is that a lot of books are based on personal experiences. And this is actually based on Asim's mom's experience. Um, Muhammad Ali came to town once. And um, in this book, this is kind of fictionalized, this book, um, this boy named Langston really wants to see um, Muhammad Ali. But when they get to the place where Ali is going to be, everyone's like laughing and talking about Muhammad Ali and how great he is and, and doing the moves. Um, but basically what happens is that there's, they're being kind of turned away. And then not to, I'm not gonna give away the surprise, but Muhammad Ali comes out and saves the day and, and creates this experience for for this mother and child, that's really incredible. I love A.G. Ford's illustrations. They're just so, there's just so much movement and there's and very expressive and warm and really speaks to young children. Um, and this is just a really great personal story that I'm glad he shared. All right, next one, Mommy's Hometown. And this is by Hope Lynn, Hope Lynn, excuse me, and illustrated by Jamie Kim. And this book I really love. It's about a mom who tells stories about her childhood home in Korea. And basically they're gonna go, they're gonna go see the town. And so there's these expectations built that it's gonna be that the town is gonna look exactly the way it did when mommy um, grew up. It was very rural when mommy grew up. You know, they could go into the stream and they could go through fields. But when they get there, to, 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 to see grandma. They find out that it's actually been like it's changed a lot. It's like a little more urban. There is a little house still there that's the same. And I love the blending of past and present. And I love that even though the child is disappointed and the mother is disappointed, they still find a way to, you know, find a happy way to solve their emotional um, disappointment or whatever. And it's just just a beautiful book, and I just love the way the, the it just kind of blurs um, the past with the present, and 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 also shows a parent and child playing together, and just it's just a really really good book. And kids understand this book. When I did this, they totally get it. It's like wow, because they've had situations where they expect something, and when they get there, it's it's completely different. Oh yeah, just a great book. Night lunch is the next one by Eric Fan of the Great Fan Brothers um, and pictures by Dina Seferling. And this book just has, it's just born to be read aloud. Um, Eric's, it has a very soothing rhythm to it, very simple. It feels like a classic story, you know, like drip drop coffee's hot, noises sniff, noses sniff the air, noses sniff the air. Um, and um, this illustrator just creates this nighttime world of fancy animals coming to this this food cart, this fancy food cart. And, and um, I always say that picture books are like um, cinema, like movies. And this book has amazing cinematography. The lighting is incredible. It's nighttime, but all the details are kind of clear, but also kind of you know, hazy and dark in a way. These it's a little spooky. Like these animals have eye, like the eyes of the animals, but the but the owls not. You know, we see that the owls not concerned. You know, everything's under control. Also very funny. Like the animals are very funny in the book, and there's a beautiful, um, beautiful solution at the end. There's there's um, it's just a, it really there's a character who needs who's hungry and needs food, and the owl makes sure that the that animal is taken care of. It's just a beautiful book. All right, drum roll, please. Even though this is a sad book, oh, yeah, drum roll, <laughs> a drum roll, please. a happy drum, drum roll, happy drum roll. By the way, it's about um, a tortoise who dies. No, um, dead tortoise. Rodney was a tortoise, but I don't want, um, don't want to like, like yeah, so flipping about this. That's but it's by by That's Nan Forler, and it's um, and it's by Yang Ling Kang. The illustrations are by Yang Ling Kang. This is a, po a book about. I mean, you see, was you know clearly, you know, there's going to be possible pet. You know, the pet will probably not make it to the end of the book. But what makes this book really, really um, stand, what, what makes it stand out for me is the way, it's like The Rabbit Listened. There was a book called The Rabbit Listened a few years ago by Corey Dorfeld. 
I like how, you know, it is about this girl who loves a tortoise named Rodney. Rodney passes away. And I like that the book doesn't give this simple flip it, but we'll get a new turtle, you know, we'll get a puppy. We'll get a, you know, it goes through lots of different emotions and, and there's a, like a thing with empathy where a, a, another child comes along and shares a story about, you know, said, I liked Rodney too. And then also shares a story about a pet that died, you know, that they had. I just, I just think that's a beautiful solution. I just think that it, um, and it's, and it's just very emotionally resonant, resonant, resonant. Um, yeah. So just a beautiful book. Okay. Okay. Now, yes, a drum roll. All right. Uh, okay. A funny book, a really funny book, Tiny Spoon versus Little Fork. This is by Constance Lobardo and pictures by Dan and Jason. I love comedy humor books that surprise me, um, books that stick the landing, books that take a, co a comedic idea and then fly like they take the idea and then fly with it and these characters literally fly so like not not by choice they're thrown by the baby but basically it's about a spoon and a fork that's competing for the affection of a baby that's learning how to eat like like on their own and the spoon like talks about how important they are the fork talks about how important they are we get the history of spoons and it's you know there's grandpa scoop and cousin teaspoon family albums and then Fork has Fork, of course, is more modern. Has their family history on it on a tablet, you know. Um, and there's, I just love how this book comes together. How they're trying to one up each other, and then the baby surprises them by doing something rather horrific, and then <laughs> and then they have to save the day. And meanwhile, along the way, there's a there's a stuffy, there's a, like a little stuffed animal who just is also a character, a character all their own, who's just a happy go lucky ear bitten off kind of character yeah. um, who's just like, hey, this is my life. Welcome to it. Woo um, but Constance keeps um, surprising you in this book and Dan and Jason's illustrations are absolutely hilarious. So Tiny Spoon versus Little Fork. And then a drum roll, please. For... I have a lot of stories about like parents connecting. Um, and this is Together We Ride by Valerie Bowling and illustrated by Kalani Juanita. Who's a Coretta Scott King Award honoree. And this is a seemingly simple story. It's the very, very, like, kind of, like, inside, you know, outside, you know, very simple. The illustrations are very warm. And um, and I like how it's, like, they're almost like panoramic shots of, of, of these characters. But there's a lot going on in this book. It's about a child learning how to ride a bike. And we get lots of questions about riding bikes and like kids want to learn how to ride a bikes and it doesn't give you like a simple like she triumphs right on the first page no there are a couple of spills along the way there's excitement there's a crash yeah. you know? there's a decision whether to go on you know, like decision whether to try again and but there's also like a lot of stuff going on in the background the expressions are really powerful the light the words are very carefully chosen it's not really easy to write books like this. It makes it's kind of easy, but it's really not. I love that the dog is one-eyed. It's kind of like oh, yeah. it seems like a rescue dog, and um, yeah, just a beautiful, just a beautiful story. And um, again, going outside, family coming together, you know, um, kind of like a running motif in a lot of books I'm picking. So together we ride, and then, then the next one, yeah. And thank you. If you, if you are doing the drum roll at home, I really appreciate that. Um, where is Bina? Where is Bina Bear? Excuse me. Where is my memory of the title? Where is Bina Bear by Mike Curato? And he is extremely versatile. This is the person who did All the Way to Havana, the illustrations for that battle. And um, Margarita, Margarita, Margarita Engel book, sorry. And, um, and, uh, and also his Little Elliot books. The illustrations in here are very, very different. Um, like very, like almost like done in like markers and crayons. And this book is about an introverted bear at a party and who doesn't really want to be there. I mean, I personally like, I mean, parties are okay, I guess. Um, so I kind of related to Bina a little bit. What I love about this book is how witty, visually witty it is. That Bina um, kind of assumes different shapes through through the book and wants to hide and this little rabbit's looking for Bina and I don't want to spoil it you have to see the book yourself like the, the different shapes that Bina assumes to avoid this party 
It's just absolutely really a sweet book, a sensitive book. It's funny, but it also it also brings in like um, a feeling of empathy towards the end. And my last book is this part of the presentation is Saving the Grossest for Last. Aww. Why not? Your birthday was the best. And if at home you can do a dun 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 dun, dun, dun. by Maggie Hutchins, illustrated by Felicity, Felicita, excuse me, Felicita Sala. And it's about a cockroach that crashes a human birthday party. And what I love about this book is surprises. This book, like the Tiny Spoon book, just lots of comical surprises. It isn't just a one joke idea. It isn't like that the cockroach is on the cake and then they negotiate with the kid. Hey, don't want to, <laughs> no, there's vacuum cleaners involved. There's old relatives involved of the cockroach, old relatives of the cockroach involved. And there's also a disconnect between the, the language and the illustrations. And I love that, that, you know, your birthday was the best. And meanwhile, there's like a kid crying. <laughs> there's like a, you know, kids bugging each other and there's a cockroach just who's going to kind of, you know, you know, jump into the party. And there's, it's just really hilarious. You were so excited to see me. You screamed. <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea like, you know, like, uh, yeah, the cockroach sees it one way and, um, what's reality is actually it's a little bit like there's a great chapter book also called esme's birthday conga line where the character oh, esme yeah. is saying this is really amazing and all the other characters are like Ugh. Yeah. so this book is hilarious there's a sequel coming out um there's a sequel coming out this spring um called your school was the best um i just love that this book no i did not know where it was going at all and when i read it to kids they were just laughing hysterically um so your birthday was the best Okay, that's my part of the presentation. Thank Ooh. you for listening. And well, I'm now yeah. going to turn it over to the amazing Betsy Bird. All right. She's so from... this is going to be a, a whole angling situation. Okay, We're sure. like angling this here, I'm angling this here, I'm angling this here. There we go. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, no, if there's a time delay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's okay. If you want to type um, in the comments uh, as they come, uh, that's cool. I've already done that one, but okay. feel free. And if you don't want to, that's cool too. Hello, I'm Betsy Bird, and I've got some books as well. And so uh, press return on that. Sure. Perfect. And then I'll make it appear here. So Brian provided me with a beautiful treasure chest with which to use and dip into for my books, so I'm going to do that um, because that's how I roll, because if you give me a treasure chest, I'm freaking going to use the treasure chest. All right, we're starting high with uh, action. How Movies Began by Megan McCarthy. So Megan's been around for a while. I love Megan's work. I love her googly eyes. Her googly eyes are the best. And the thing is, she could draw anything if she wanted to. Case in point, look at this shot from Metropolis. I don't know if you can even see it, but it is so gorgeously done. So this book is not digital at all. Not that there's anything wrong with digital. It takes a lot of art to do with digital, but this isn't done in digital. And it's the history of filmmaking. Um, it replete with, I love how she does these old timey dudes with their big googly eyes. And uh, you've got Moybridge. You've got, um, you know, you've got these, these short films. You've got the world's first uh, viral cat video, which was two cats boxing. Uh, you can look that up on YouTube sometime if you want to. In any case, uh, she's a complete delight in how she tells the story because it's hard to tell the entire, she stops once sound comes in, but she also ties books in or the, uh, the movies into movies that kids might've seen. Um, so, you know, you've got Harold Lloyd hanging off of the clock, but then you've also got, maybe they've seen Hugo. Uh, maybe they've seen uh, Doc from Back to the Future. Probably not, but they've seen Hugo. Um, so yeah, it's a just a really clever, sh how she works in color, because you know, we're talking about black and white, but for a while people actually did tint the film. So she's able to work those in. Um, follow her on Instagram if you don't follow her. She's been doing some little videos in conjunction with this book, which just are fantastic. And uh, oh my God, if you're into back matter, check this out. Whoa. And and, and, and the back matter, while very, very good, is not better than the front matter. So that's always key, because when you get these books where, like, the back matter is amazing, and people are like, the book's amazing. I'm like, no, the back matter was amazing. The rest of the book was boring. This is very not boring. 
And it's got fantastic back matter. The best of all possible worlds. So that is Action, How Movies Began by Megan McCarthy. Hooray. All right, next up we have, go for it. Press that, press that return there. Excellent. All right. We have a bear, a bee, and a honey tree. Uh, this is by Daniel Bernstrom. And the art is by Brandon James Scott. This is hilarious. I love funny books and I love bear books and I love funny bear books. If you guys have not seen uh, one of my favorites, who, what is it? Who wet my pants? Is that the title? Yes. Yeah. Who wet my pants uh, by Bob Shea. Mwah. Chef's kiss of brilliance. This is a, a very different bear book. It's almost a silent film, but not quite because the text is just so fun, bouncy. It's like, a bee, a honey tree, a bee, a busy bee, a honey bee, a bear, a hungry bear, a honey bear. It is fun to read aloud. And I have to say, it uses that old page turn so well. So you get this amazing, <laughs> this amazing shot of a grumbling bee, a rumbling tree. Now watch the bear's eyes very carefully. Oh, man, we can't do it over here. Okay. Watch the bear's eyes very carefully when you do the turn of the page. <laughs> just, just how he just, the, the, the pupils just boop, they just move over just a little bit and they look directly at you as all these angry bees uh, come together. It's, it's one of my favorite things of all time. So if if you missed it, I hope you didn't, but if you did, you got you got to find a bear, a bee, and a honey tree. It is great for younger ages because it's always very hard to find those books for the younger ages. So. This is a delight, and I hope you find it. Yay! Yay. Next up. Boop, 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 boop. All right. This is Beauty Woke, and this is by Nonika Ramos. It is illustrated by Paolo Escobar. Okay, so basically, what if you took the Sleeping Beauty idea, but you set it entirely in uh, a Puerto Rican community, and uh, you made it about waking up to the world around you figuratively rather than literally. It is so cleverly done. You've got to keep an eye uh, on Noniko Ramos because she is doing very, first of all, she can rhyme. And this is nothing against rhyming in general, but rhyming often sucks. And sometimes it's good. And sometimes it's really not good. And when it's really not good, it's painful. She's always good. Now, does that mean that you can't practice this before you read to a large group? Practice this. You're going to want to practice this um, because it's going to it's going to need a little work sometimes. Sometimes the rhythms you're going to have to get into. But look at the art. Look at the images. The writing is beautiful. Besides, I also just I just can't help but love um, then Beauty's First Parade. Relatives showed up from Pelham Bay and White Plains. I'm like, yes, Pelham Bay, White Plains, because I lived in New York for a long time. So I was very into this. I like the authenticity of the setting. Um, clearly, the illustrator has been to New York, uh, which you don't always get with, with New York books. It's just, it's just the coolest. Look at that. Look at that spread. Look at that. I gotta resist that. You can't. You can't. So you're just gonna have to get Beauty Woke because it's so good. All right, next up we have, oh, right, here we go. Okay, so recently um, I review for Kirkus and I was informed that I'm their weird death reviewer. So that's fun. Um, apparently if there's an unusual picture book about death, I'm your gal. Uh, so this is the place, this is kind of how it started because apparently they liked um, what I did with this one. Oh, I can, I, you can't feel it through the screen, but the texture on the cover alone is just so lovely. This is The Circles in the Sky. It's by Carl James Mountford. And one of the things I really like about this is, first of all, it's, it's not your usual story. It is about a fox who encounters a bird who is dead. Now, the fox does not know this bird, um, but he sort of is unnerved, one might say, by having encountered, um, first of all, he basically comes across, and they do do this. Um, I believe it's crows will hold sort of funerals. They'll, they'll gather around a, a dead bird and they're very intelligent. Um, and he's sort of unnerving, doesn't know what to think about this. And he he makes um, sort of a connection with, I believe it's a butterfly. I know it's a moth, a moth. And they have this whole very serious, very taking it 
seriously conversation about death and life and mourning and is this right or is this not right that this happened um and it's all the while you're just getting these gorgeous illustrations just absolutely beautiful um from page to page while dealing with this in a way that really respects the child reader's intelligence um and there's no easy answers there's no like one answer at the end but it ends on a very hopeful note it's a very hopeful book, uh, and uh, yeah, it's fantastic. That's the circles in the sky. All right. Oh, this is a good one. This one I'm always I'm always very excited about this one because you have to understand. So I'm a huge fan of science fiction picture books, of which we get what four in a given year if we're lucky. Um, but we got this one this year, and it made me very very happy. It's Dan Yakarina, who you saw earlier when Brian was talking about. I think it's. Is it Fire, Fire, Flow? Or, yes, 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 Fire, Fire, Fire Flow. Fire. Yeah, it's, there's two of them. There's two of them. The one with Andrea Zimmerman, yeah. They're both like, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, apparently the man got bored because he got another book coming out this year. And this one's epic. This one's really, first of all, I love the color scheme, which is yellow and purple and red. Not a color scheme. I have seen that often. Takes place in what I'm just going to assume is some kind of dystopian future, though for the people living in it, it seems pretty utopian because you've got these big eye balloons that take care of your every need. Um, the problem with this being that Bix uh, doesn't like being taken care of all the time. Bix also does not care for reading from the prescribed screen, learn to read things that she's given by these guys. So one day she follows, she sees a mouse and she, by the way, this is one of those picture books that actually has chapters. It's just that long. And, uh, and she follows this mouse into this entire underground city that's sort of been blocked away by the floating eyeballs and down there discovers libraries and books and it sort of forments an entire revolution against the eyeballs in the course of a single picture book it's not that long and yet packs a huge punch and a huge amount of story uh into this whole thing i'm not going to spoil it but there is a happy ending and uh yeah, it's just, uh, I like picture books that take big swings and try to do, you know, really creative things. Uh, and, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And City Under the City works. So that's nice. Yay. All right. Oh, yes, this one. All right, ready, ready. So this next one. Uh, I'm not a dog person. I can take or leave them. I like them fine. I don't own them. I don't intend to own them. My sister owns one. It's a nice dog. I like it very much. I do not want to own it. However... Even without being a dog person, I am very into Hot Dog uh, by Doug Salati. This is a great book. It is, again, practically wordless. So apparently I've got a thing for the practically wordless books this year. But it, and set in New York City. And I've really got a thing for books set in New York City that are authentic to that place. It doesn't say it's New York City, but you can tell. Um, about a dog who is <laughs> not having its best life because it is hot. And the dog is overheating and the owner seemingly doesn't seem to be paying attention to the fact the dog is overheating. And this is just too close, too loud, too much. That's it. Middle of the street, the dog plants its little doggy feet and it's like, I'm not doing this anymore. We are, we are done. The dog is done. And to her credit, uh, his owner, who fortunately this is a small enough dog that you can actually pick up, uh, scoops him up and they immediately just take off for uh, cool breezes, a beach, um, sand to play in, waves. Look at, look at how beautifully he illustrates those waves. That's just gorgeous. Um, and then by the time they return to the city, because this isn't like a let's run away to an island and never come back. No, they go back home. But when they go back home, it's cooled down. It's nighttime. Nighttime in the city is a much better place to be. And they go back to their apartment and they go to sleep. And I'm exhausted after this trip, but you know, you can understand that they are too. And it is just beautifully rendered. Um, one of the best picture books of the year. I'd go so far as to say. So uh, that would be Hot Dog by Doug Salati. Yay. Oh, but you know what I really love? I love me funny books. Um, and I would argue that one of the funniest author illustrators working today uh, does not live in the United States, by no means. Uh, Shinsuke Yoshitaki, 
Oh, was, the book I'm talking about in this particular case is I Can Explain, had another book out this year as well. Um, oh, what is it? My rubber band. I can't remember. What was the exact title? It was on I, our 101 list. So obviously I, I won't give up my rubber. I band. won't give up my rubber band. Thank you. That was great. I'm also a huge fan of I Can Explain um, because I can explain. Well, it's just Shinsuke just really knows how to dig down deep into gross things. Um, deeply abusing gross things. Um, so this kid's walking around. <laughs> he just got his finger up his nose. And uh, and there's a, there's a great sequence on the back that you do not want to watch before lunch. And uh, his mom is like, stop. stop. You know, his mom, first of all, who is clearly not just annoyed, but also kind of exhausted, is like, what are you doing? And he explains that there is a but button uh, inside his nose. And he press if he presses it, uh, it releases cheerful beams that make other people happy. You can just see the mom, she's like, oh, her exact words, I believe are, I'm already happy enough. So would you please stop releasing any more of your cheerful beams? And uh, it just goes through all the small annoying things he does and his completely wackadoodle like explanations as to why he is doing one thing or another. I've always loved his style. Every single one of his books is a joy. Very few author illustrators like just hit it out of the park on a, such a consistent basis, but he really does. Um, and of course, my favorite thing is that uh, the end papers at the back are all the annoying things that the mom does. <laughs> so at, at the front is all the annoying stuff that he does. And then at the back is all the annoying stuff his mom does, which I'm um, just like two thumbs up. That is, that is very, very good. So that is, I can explain, um, which is, you have to read that way. Uh, been by Shinsuke Yoshitaki. Yay. So Yay. Ooh. Remember when I said that I like books that take big swings? Uh, well, uh, this book took a big old swing. So we've seen books that talk about, you know, your, your ethnic heritage and relating to usually one parent or another, um, or your grandmother's culture or, or something like that. Now, the, the Catholic Chest um, by Radia Chadauri, uh, which is illustrated by Lavanya Naidu, is really interesting because it's not just your parents. It's not just your grandparents. It's your aunts. It's your extended family. But the way to render this story is so it seems very basic at first. It's like, oh, she, you know, this little girl, she finds um, these quilts that are made out of old saris um, that her, her, you know, her aunts and, and her grandmother have made over the years. But then you get these four panel um, wordless stories for each one of the people being featured. And what's so interesting about this is that their stories are very, very different. Like sometimes you, you get a definite sense of war um, with some of these stories. With some of them, you get like just out and out um, tragedy. Like this is the this aunt whose daughter died um, and now she's a school teacher. And just the simplicity of it just like, you know, rips my heart out. Um, but each one of these um, you know, going to work um, independently, you know, maybe for the first time, a uh, woman in the family who's done so. Um, it's just, it's just so well done. The art is good. The writing is really good. And it's an innovative way of telling a family story, um, which at the same time connects the child to the greater family. It's, it's really clever. So the cabinet chest, uh, do not miss this. It is quite good. <laughs> Oh, yes. Okay, so I had a chance to go to uh, the Bologna Book Fair in March of this year. And while I was there, I got to see all the art from around the world has been honored. And they, they have a big illustration show of some of the best. And one of the books, not only that was shown, but that they later talked about, uh, was Madani's Best Game. Now, this is by Fran Pintadara and Raquel, Il uh, Raquel Catalina is on the art. And this is, um, it just looks like another like soccer picture book. And you're like, oh, soccer picture book. Oh. Um, but no, in fact, it is very clever. Um, you've got Madani. Madani is the best. Oh, he is the best of the best of the best. And he never wears shoes when he's playing. And so, you know, everyone's like, his, his mom's always working. So she's not able to see his games. Um, and so, you know, People are, you know, the kids really want him to have some shoes. And so at one point, um, 
they're like, you know, Madonna's been saving money in a metal tin and everyone assumes he's been saving for shoes. And once he gets shoes, they're going to beat all the other teams. It's going to be like the best thing of all time. And there is this twist at the end as to what he's actually spending the money on um, that comes very unexpectedly. And there's no like real indication that it's going to have this twist until you get there. Um, but it's done exquisitely well. I believe this is from Spain. Um, and it is just a delightful book. So Madani's best game. Yay. Yay. All right. Oh, this was, you know, I started TikTok for the first time this year. Uh, I was like, oh, don't do it. Oh, TikTok, but um, and then I started, and then I did this book, which I think is like at 13,000 views or something absolutely freaking ridiculous. Not because of me, it's because of the book. My Fate is Fresh. It's by Shantae Grant. It's illustrated by Kit Thomas. If you haven't heard of it, um, you should, because you know how Crown was really good? And in fact, Derek Barnes, who, who wrote Crown, uh, has a little blurb on the cover. But this is not Crown. This is a very different book from Crown, because... You look at this cover and you're like, oh, it's just like kid goes to the barbershop and he's proud of his hair. And that there's nothing wrong with that storyline. But we've seen that storyline a fair amount. This is a little girl going to the salon and she wants a fade. She wants a fade. And everybody in this salon has an opinion on her hair. Everybody. She, you know, the you know, a perm, a press, a trim, a chop. And she's like. And it's also rhyming. Of course it is. Uh, I said and shook my head. The freshest fade up on the block. And boy, getting that fade is just really tricky because people have a lot of opinions on her hair. And it just sort of like builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until, you know, it's actually the girl doesn't have the breakdown. I think it's the barber who has the breakdown where she's just like, everybody stop talking. I'm just giving her fade. And, uh, oh, I absolutely adore uh, this book. It is fun to read. It is delightful. And yes, she does get her fade. She gets her fade at the end of the book. So it was a happy ending as well. So yay, my fade is fresh. It is a good book. Um, again, love, 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 love my, uh, my funny books. Um, this one, apparently, and I did not know this, but I, I talked to one of the authors on it, Emma Hunsiger, and she said that uh, she was very inspired by Jules Pfeiffer um, and, and but and Harry Harry Allard um, the Stupids books and I really thought that was interesting because this is my parents won't stop talking uh, by as it's by both Emma Hunsiger and Tilly Walden it's not written by one and illustrated one they sort of merged their styles together for this book and it is a hoot um, apparently it was written during COVID so it is about this girl who wants to go to the park with her moms and that'd be great except oh no oh no what happens her moms see the credenzas not the credenzas the credenzas if you want the best writing of the year read what the parents are talking about in the background of this because it is like literally you know do you know a good garage for an oil change I don't know if the kids are old enough for a spiritual bath just yet, but it sounds nice. Um, these are like the worst grown up topics, like just all combined into one. It is so great. I love this book. And, the, you know, it basically, I like any picture book that descends into chaos uh, at some point. And this definitely, she basically has a break with reality. She was like, well, if we're not going to the park, I, I could be the park. I can be the swings. I can be the slide. I can be everything. And then, but of course, in the midst of this, her parents were like, uh, let's go. And she's like, uh, it is a great read aloud. And it is something that every single child in the world has dealt with. My parents won't stop talking. So, yay. Ooh. I also like books where I don't quite understand what they're saying, but I like what they're doing. Um, Sergei Ruzzi is having a good year. Uh, and this one, no, said Custard the Squirrel. Uh, I don't know what this book's about. You can assume on your own end what this book is about. He's not going to tell you. He's going to leave it to you to determine what this book is about. Basically, uh, right here in the yellow, this is Custard the Squirrel. Boop. And this is a little diapered rat who is trying desperately to get Custard the Squirrel to admit that he's a duck. And Custard the Squirrel's not going for it. And the little rat's doing it like, 
Custard the Squirrel. Will you please quack? No, said Custard the Squirrel. <laughs> and it just keeps going to the point where the rat finally, um, by the end, uh, sort of comes around to to what uh, you know Custard is, Custard's view is. But you also kind of get the feeling that the rat still doesn't quite understand. It's really interesting. You could use this a million different ways with kids. I don't even know, but I just love the tone of the darn thing. It's just delightful. Uh, so that is no! It's a custard the squirrel. Yes! Ooh! So on our 101 list at yeah, Evanston Public Library. We're not allowed to include board books because you can't place holds on board books at this particular library. And therefore, we don't want people to not be able to get the books that they want. So if we did have board books on the 101 list, this would have been on it. Uh, this is Odd Birds, Meet Nature's Weirdest Flock by Laura Gell, illustrated by Gareth Lucas. Now, not the first book in the series. They already did Odd Beasts. See, boop, boop, right there. But so good. We've seen a lot of these STEM board books and I'm sorry, y'all, they pack them with text. They're not for little kids. They're for five-year-olds who do not want to get anywhere near a board book. So I find them kind of useless. This, however, is for little kids and it's STEM and it's awesome. The, this seabird has a pouch. This booby has blue feet. This shoebill's beak is huge. It goes on like that. By the time you get to the Watson, which is, smells like poop, it's fantastic. But now look at the back. Look at that. Look at those. Look at those photos. Woohoo! Beautiful photos of every animal, well, bird that you've seen in there. Did you know that, that oil birds use echolocation? I didn't know that. And uh, so I'm learning stuff. And it's also got cool things. And yes, there's a lot of text back here, but that's for those kids who actually want to know more. And if they don't want to know more, if they just want the basic text, the Hawassan smells like poop is enough to satisfy them. So there you go. And that is fantastic on birds. Uh, love that book. Yay! Ooh, this one's a nice one. I believe I am correct when I say this is Hungarian. Um, this is Pina by Alif Yemenichi. And this is a very good post-COVID book. Uh, or rather post-lockdown book, I should say. Because Pina does not want to go outside. Everything Pina wants is in Pina's incredibly cool. Cozy, cozy home. Oh my gosh. If you have been looking for coziness, this is coziness incarnate. Look at this. Beautiful, sweet. This is model work. Every single thing in here, including um, we get some records as well. Uh, yes, that are just fantastic. But the from the food to the lighting, this is so lovely. But inevitably, as you might expect, Pina runs out of cheese. Grants out of chase, gotta go outside. Now, when Pina goes outside, the world outside is not models. The world outside is illustration. Um, and so Pina's gotta navigate this like scary, look at, look at little Pina, Ooh, look at those eyes. Does not wanna go out there, but does go out there. And it turns out it's not so bad. It's actually kind of nice. And there's like kind of nice people out there and maybe you might try something new. And so it's, uh, you know, you still get the feeling that Pina's gonna be spending the bulk of his time inside. But sometimes you get stuff outside that you can't get inside. And it's a really nice link. So yay, that's Pina. And it's by Alif Yamanichi. Hmm. Yay. Ooh. All right, so when I was a kid, uh, I watched a lot of Sesame Street. And I watched a lot of Buffy St. Marie. Buffy St. Marie was a folk singer. Um, she was, I believe, Cree. And she uh, was Canadian as well. And she did a whole sequence on breastfeeding that was like way ahead of its time. Imagine trying to do that on the HBO Sesame Street today. Just think about it for a second. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, but she did it and she sang songs and she was awesome. One of her songs, uh, Still This Love Goes On, uh, is turned into a picture book with Julie Flatt. Julie Flatt who wins things. Just all sorts of things. Not American things because Canadian. Urgh inconveniently Canadian, as I like to say, but this is great. So I'm not usually a huge fan of the picture books that you buy new parents that are just like, you love your baby and your baby loves you. Love, 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 love. That's fine. Parents love them. Babies could not care less. This book is quite good. Also, it's a song, so you can link it with the song. You could read it with the song if you wanted to. And look at some of the art that is going on inside of here. It's just 
beautifully illustrated. Really nice. Look at that. Oh, gorgeously done. And the words work as a picture book because that doesn't always work. I remember when uh, the Simon and Garfunkel, uh, you know, it, it's all happening at the zoo was turned into a picture book. And then it was like, and, you know, the zookeeper loves Rom and they named the raccoon Rom. And I was like, no, it doesn't. No, no, I'll just give it up, guys. This actually works. It's beautiful and lovely. And who would want to really read, just read this anyway? So, yeah, you, you got to get your hands on Still This Love Goes On. It's, it's delightful. Yeah. Ooh, this one was so difficult to get my hands on. I had it earlier this year, and then it kind of like disappeared. And now I, I finally got a library copy um, because, oh, this is really, really good. Okay, this is the very best suka. It's a story from Uganda. It's by Shoshana Nambi, and it's illustrated by Morin Yogev. Okay, so there is a, a segment of the population in Uganda uh, who are Jewish. And this could be like, sometimes when picture books introduce you to that fact, like that's the plot. Like, hey, these people exist. Boo -doo, boo -ba -doo, boo. That's not the plot here. The plot here is quite good. So every year in her village, uh, Shoshi and her brothers try to make like the best decorated uh, suka. And this year they think they got, a, they got a pretty good lead on it. They're like, yeah, we're going to do it this year. We're totally going to win. Oh, but then there's that neighbor who was saving up and he got freaking electric lights on his suka. And everyone's like, oh totally gonna win but then there's a horrible storm and it knocks like that particular suka like completely flattens it and then people gotta kind of like figure out what they're gonna do uh to help out and maybe mm, we could all not be jerks about this uh it's really good writing it's really fun um you know we're always looking for uh world jewish content not just american jewish content so it's really nice. You've got to take a look at uh, the very best suka, a story from Uganda. Um, if you can find it, um, because it, it's it's fed by it. Just buy it. I mean, it'll just be easier that way. It's easier. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Oh, okay. So this comes to the portion where we've got a, uh, we got we got some books that we're doing together here. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. History is being made. I'm going to go. History is being made. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hello. Do, do, do. Hello. I'm going to steal that from you, though. I just, I just okay. appeared. Yes, you were gone, and now you're back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Do you want to you want to do the first of, sure. the, uh, of these things that we're doing together here? All right. Yes, these are books we I we love. Pretty much all the books. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was nothing I did here where Brian were... was like, "How dare she mention that book? I but hate then, that book." Yeah. But there were three. There are three that we just we both loved, and we couldn't. We were trying to flip coins. We were trying yeah, to yeah, exactly. Us, so we're like, we're like, no. Well, let's talk about them together. Ta -da! And the first one is Night Owl. Night Owl by Christopher. So Denise. good. So good. It's basically about a little owl who wants to be. A night, yes. uh, hence the title, Night Owl. It's sort of a giveaway. Kind of a giveaway. Yeah, kind of and, giveaway. Yeah. But the, and I just love this is like um, I compared this a little bit to um, Mel Fell last from last year. Where, ah, yeah. Where it's seemingly about like a very silly, funny topic, and yet the art is also just so beautiful. Yeah. It's funny. So you have the like the giant knights, and then you have the little 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 um, it goes to night school and becomes a knight, and then is put on night duty. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, starts hearing scary noises yeah. in the night. And what could it be? And I love the eyes. All the eyes. The eyes are really oh, great. And so it just like lots of surprises in it, and and also just beautiful art. Yeah, and something's falling out of the book, and just some you know beautiful art in it, and also yeah. just incredible. Whoops. Incredible dragon. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Oh, yeah. hold it. Here. It goes this way. Okay. It goes the Ooh, opposite there way. There we go. Yeah, there we go. dragon. Oh my gosh. The dragon's so huge it can't fit in fit on the screen. Can't even fit on the screen. Yeah, it's just such a great book. And and Betsy, what what else do you love about Night Owl? I mean, I really feel like this is one of the Caldecott contenders of the year. Mm -hmm. Um does great things with light. Um, and uh, I, I did have a chance to interview him earlier this year, um, and I asked him if he was uh, influenced at all by, you know, the Wyeths, um, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly N.C. Wyeth, and he was like, I am totally into N.C. Wyeth, <laughs> which I can kind of tell because he's got this one sequence of the knights on their horses, and it just feels like you're in, like, if you were in, like, a children's room somewhere and this was, like, on the wall, you wouldn't even blink. 
you'd be like, yeah, of course, yes, that's a mural that shows brave knights going off with the teeny tiny little itty bitty owl at the bottom. So I love this book. It also awesome. reminds me in, in a really good way, like a David Wenzel. Um, yeah, who, who yeah, in, in yeah. The, like, yeah, very. I can like, see that, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Just a beautiful book. Funny, has a great ending. In story, it works beautifully in story time. I agree. Um, kids love the surprise endings. And just the, the fact that the owl's so little. I'm just trying to, to figure out like how he did the art, and I don't actually have an answer for that. I don't know if it's digital or if it's actually. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's done with Photoshop. Yeah, he's just wow. really good digital artist. And you know, we've gotten to the point where we just can't tell anymore. It came out early in the year, and we just fell in love yeah. with it right away. I think it's. I, I think it's sustained its its enthusiasm there. So yay! Okay, that's the first one. Let me hand you the next one. Oh yeah. Oh wow! Yes. Oh. Let me see here. Did I get it? Hey, there we Witch go. Witch Hazel by Molly Idol came out towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. and she has yeah. Another, yeah. And just, a little sooner. And it's really like an incredible book. As you can see, I know it's glary. Maybe I'll open it up for less glary. Yeah. It's done with like um, kind of like browns, blacks, and whites. It's it's very, yeah. very, um, like very limited palette, but very unlimited in terms of. Which is of unlike creativity. her because usually she does like very, you know, floral pretty pinks yeah. and purples and whites and things. And this is a real departure for her, but I think it's a it's a good departure for oh, her. Yeah. yeah. And it's about, you know, the a, a, you know, a child goes to visit an elderly relative, mm -hmm. witch hazel, and we start seeing the memories. Whoops, memories of Yeah, the here. memories are in white. And white. It's just such a fascinating way of doing it. And then they start like mingling. They start like the child modern child starts playing with the memories and starts mm -hmm. You know, hearing the stories and starts becoming part of the story, and it's just really, just really incredible. Just yeah. really inventive, and like I said, unlimited creativity here, and just just beautiful. Just a beautiful book. She does have some like she does love to do paper play in it. There's a nice beautiful fold out. Molly Ido also has a, new, a book out with Juana Martinez Neal, written by who um, Julie Fuliano, mm -hmm. um, called I Don't Care, which yeah. is also a great year for Molly Ido. Oh yeah, Fantastic. it's a strong Molly year. Molly. Uh, sometimes you get a strong Molly here, sometimes you don't get any Molly at all. Mm -hmm. We're very lucky this year. Yeah. This year we got two Molly. Ha ha! I take that, other years. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's absolutely beautiful. It almost feels like, uh, you know, when like an artist, I, and, uh, I should know this term, but you know, when they take away from something, there's a term for that Subtract kind of art. Subtract, yeah, like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure y'all know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that that is uh, that is what it feels like to me. And it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. just some of her best work. Yeah. And just a really good story. A very moving, just a very, very strong book. Yeah. Very moving, very touching at the end without being saccharine or exactly. cloying. It's just a very moving story. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we got our last, our last one, almost, sort of. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's getting there. So, do 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 do. Boo! <laughs> I like to do the book. Book. The yes. World Belonged to Us by the great Jacqueline Woodson, mm -hmm. illustrated by the great Leo Espinosa, who's a Pura Belfry winner. Um, this is just a just a fantastic book. You, um, if you haven't seen it, make sure you put a hold on it right away. If you have seen it, you probably know what we mean. But basically, it's about it's the first day of not the first day of summer. It's the last day of school. Last day of school. And yeah. the kids are <laughs> bursting out of school. They're playing. They're having a great time on the street. It's a nostalgic story. There's oh, this yeah. recurring line about once upon a time in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. but it could be like anywhere. It's like it's it's not just Brooklyn specific, but it's you know it's it's this, just kids playing everywhere, and it is about the joy of outdoor play, and um, the joy of community, and and kids just having a great time, you know, being very inventive, being very like drawing things, jumping up and down, and as you as you can see. Um, Espinosa's illustrations just like fly and soar across the page. Yeah, it's just really beautiful, and I love the tributes to people who lived in the neighborhood. Um, and just stick ball. Oh, just just it's just such a you know burst of energy. I mean, it feels like early Sesame Street yes. animation to me because yeah, that does. was that it's that exact era, and then it's kind of the same colors and and hairstyles and the clothing styles. Um, it's Definitely a free range kid book. It is it is one of those fantasies that kids today would read because these days you don't have as many kids just wandering the streets until it's dark and yes. then finally going in for some food and then just running outside again like right afterwards. So yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia to it, but it doesn't feel like a solely nostalgic book. It just feels like it feels like a fantasy. 
for kids today and a wonderful one of like sort of a kid land in the streets. And uh, yeah, and it just captures summer so well. And I just, you know, two thumbs up on that clothing. The clothing choices oh, I know. are I know. just, so just perfect. spot freaking on. Yeah. I'm aging myself. I mean, I remember wearing clothes like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, with those like the socks, the socks that went socks, up your knee. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the stripes. And her writing is so beautiful. Work. This is beautiful picture book. Yeah, her too. writing is, yeah, that's what's so key about it. I mean, you could actually enjoy the perfect book perfectly well if the writing wasn't great, but the writing is legit great. Yeah, is um, I yeah. think this that's that's gonna get an award pretty much. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take off this. All right, so then we're gonna have like our ode, our ode mm -hmm. to folk tales and fairy tales. Yeah, we have um, and religious tales. <laughs> we have different sections in our 101 great books for kids. And, you know, middle grade novels, graphic novels, nonfiction, easy and early chapter books. And this year was a particularly amazing year for the fairy tales, folk tales, and religious tales. And we just wanted to quickly give a shout out to them. Yeah. Um, to uh, to five of the books that made it. Um, just because they were just incredible. There was um, mm -hmm. Carry Me Back, The Town That Walked. And this was by David Barclay Moore and illustrated by John Holyfeld. Yeah, um, that book ooh. is really cool. It's an original folktale, which sometimes I'm I'm kind of like squidgy about. I'm like, man, there's plenty of good already existing ones, but no, that one's it's good. Um, also, probably the only book that was on our list this year that actually mentioned the KKK, mm. um, but works it into the story perfectly. I mean, they're the villains are awful, and uh, and it's just a really I don't know. It's just a really well written title. Um, and the art's so cool. It just has really cool art. It I just does. like, I love that style. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Fantastic. I don't want people to forget about that. Yeah. And then, um, and then this is kind of longer than a picture book. So we're cheating a little bit, but why not? Oh my God, it's so long. I thought I could read it like <laughs> quickly and I was wrong. I read, brought it to my lunch and I was like, I'll read other things too. No, uh -uh. I was like for what, like 40, 45 minutes? I'm going through this book being like, oh, what if I go this? What if I do this? You know? It's Endlessly Ever After. And it's a, kind of like a choose your own adventure with fairy tale characters. It's by Laurel Snyder and illustrated by the um, amazing Dan Santat, who has probably written and illustrated a book while we presented today. He's just yeah, so actually, incredibly, I know he's, he's incredibly great. Prolific. I know, yeah. He's incredible. He's amazing. Yeah. And Laurel Snyder, of course, so, is so versatile, you know, novels and and Look at that gold on the cover. And then the they put gold. so much gold on that cover. I was like, well done. Well done. But it's going to be a problem when that, because that gold Caldecast is just going to just blend right in. It's terrible, <laughs> terrible planning. Yeah. But it's basically a choose your own adventure. It's like yeah. you have these different fairy tale characters interacting, and you can really spend a long time with this book. And it's a great time to spend with a book. It's hilarious. It's funny. It's, it's witty. It's inventive. And it's just beautifully done. I saw Laurel Snyder. And I asked her, I said, like, what? I mean, and she said, yeah, it was quite a process putting this together. It's just an amazing book. It is a little bit longer than the picture books we talked about. It's a super we long book. Talk, we wanted to talk about it anyway. It's well worth it. Yes. And then another great folktale, The Legend of Gravity. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more of like a, in the tradition of a folktale. Oh, yeah. A, a yeah, tall yeah. Basketball no, I, no, it's a tall tale. It is a, a tall legit tale. tall tale. It's a tall yeah. tale. But Charlie Parker, this is a book about a, uh, an amazing kid who is just incredible at playing basketball and it becomes cosmic. It becomes yeah. wild. It becomes, um, and I just love his art all the way through. It really works. Yeah. Just, yeah. He's just incredible all the way through. And the writing is fantastic. And we saw this really early in the year. I love this. This is all the different like players and what their, yeah. their different abilities are. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Just an incredible book. And, um, just it was a i mean it, we knew it was going to be in our 101 list. oh it the was we saw it, you know. yeah the minute we saw it, we were it was sort of doomed to be on the list we were <laughs> like yeah no there's no there's no question it's it's extraordinary and then this is probably the longest book we're talking about today oh I think. yeah, well, yeah. Maybe, 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 i don't know i actually think the, the dan santab yeah it might have been a little longer i'll yeah. let betsy talk about this oh goody, goody goody okay this is the real so this is the real data about the good so the thing is, if you show this side to a certain generation of people, so many people are like, I had that Mother Goose book. And like, you might, I, I had it. And I didn't even remember I had this until I saw this. Um, so the fun thing about this is that this came out, I believe, in 1918, this edition of The, of the Real Mother Goose. 
um, and uh, which means it's in the public domain. <laughs> And uh, also in 1918, it was the birth of Dadaism. Not a coincidence in this case, because John Cheska is returning to his stinky man roots and he is uh, taking five of the fairy tales from the original, The Real Mother Goose. And then with Julia Rothman, who's probably best known for doing like New York Times illustrations and things like that. She, you know, she's, this is, she hasn't done much with children, but they just, they just take these things and then they, they change them in so many different ways. And every way is different. He never repeats. And it's like, you have to go through the back because they've got all, there's secret codes and there's pig Latin, there's haiku, and there's a jabberwocky. And then there's N plus seven. You know what N plus seven is? You will now. I, hieroglyphics, anagrams, rebuses, musical notations, the military alphabet. I mean, it is... The thing is, I was reading it with one kid who was eight, and then the 11-year-old came in, and she could not tear herself away, and we were just going through it. My favorite, of course, I think is the Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star sequence. Um, twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, now we know just what you are. A luminous ball of gas, mostly hydrogen and helium, held together by your own gravity to producing light and heat from nuclear fission reactions in your core. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, now we know just what you are. It's funny. It is a great uh, book, and uh, yeah. Impossible to get away from. It's okay. amazing. It's amazing. So unpredictable. You didn't know what you were going to get next. No. You know? And then. But it'll be fun. Another amazing, and probably the last book we're talking about. The first, last book of the day. But the and, um, but just an incredible book to end on. The Three Billy Goats Gruff. And this is retold by Mac Barnett, illustrated by the incredible John Clazen, who is a Canadian who lives in the United States, so he can win yeah. the Caldecott. So and he do. And he does. And but he this, do. this book, oh, Betsy, if you want to. Oh, this. yeah, this book. Okay, so first of all, I love the original by Abjorsen. Uh, so this is in Norway, so it's not the Grimm Brothers. It was Abjorsen and the other dude whose name I always forget. And uh, they collected a lot, involved a lot of goats, and involved a lot of trolls in their collection. But this one's probably the most famous. Uh, and in this story, it tells it straight, though very funny. So Mac Barnett has so much fun with uh, the the troll just like going on about how you going to eat those goats. And he's like, I love goats. Let me count the ways. A rump of goat in honey glaze. Goat smoked, goat poached, a goat pot roast. Goat smorgasbord, goat smeared on toast. Yeah, it is. And also it makes me really hungry for goat, um, which I don't think I'd find edible usually there is a visual joke in this book so you know we all know the original story where it's like the first billy goat's small and the second one's a little bigger and the third one's like the biggest of all um but the wonderful thing about this is they do it in the book where he's like the second billy goat's like okay well my my, my sibling's coming and then you get the, <laughs> the troll i see if i can get it on the screen here yes you have the troll uh down here thinking of the billy goat and you just have the legs <laughs> just like that just that just wrecked me. I absolutely adored it. So yeah, uh, it, it's a straight retelling. Uh, so if you're going to catalog this, uh, someone asked earlier, where would we catalog um, the real Dada Mother Goose? Would you categorize it under nonfiction? Dewey, where did we put it? We put oh, it Mother Goose stories. We put it under Mother Goose stories. Three nine eight point three. We did. It's kind of a fractured version, but you know, we're fine with it. Uh, this also would go straight up in the the fairy tale section. So. Look for it there. Yay! Oh, and I have to offer a correction. Um, could you get the the Muhammad Ali book out? Because yes. I wrote the wrong. I somehow oh, sure. my mind just wasn't thinking because it wasn't. Brian added it last minute. Brian uh, added it last minute. You told me added it last minute, and so I wrote the wrong creators <laughs> on the screen, and I realized it while you were talking. I was like, ah, oh, shoot. Uh, me keep... and Muhammad Ali. It's actually by Jabari Asim, who's been around for a while, making those really good board books a while ago. Um, and illustrated by A.G. Ford. And you mentioned A.G. Ford. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, I put the wrong people. Oh. I'm making the book. So that's who actually. Yeah, I book. grabbed this. I, I, I was like, oh, I want to talk about this. And it was like literally like five minutes before. Our, exactly. So uh, it's on me. But what you do. I, this book is just amazing. It's beautiful. It's I a great it. book. All right. Well, that's the, uh, the end of our presentation today. As I say, uh, if you go to the beginning of the comments, if you're watching this on Facebook uh, or just at the beginning of, I don't know, 
I don't think it'll show up in the recording, but if you if you are on Facebook, you can go to the beginning of the comments and you can see the link to the 101 Great Books for Kids. If you Google it and put in 101 Great Books for Kids 2022, it'll come right up. You can even get a PDF if you want to. And it's a beautiful list. Uh, some of these books are on there. Not all these books uh, are on that list. Some of these yeah, are just we went, our pet favorite ones. Yeah, so. we went off We went off the list, that list a little bit. We put our own favorites on there. We, we went for deep cuts, you know. Yeah. Oh, and if you live in the Chicago area, we will be giving this presentation live. Uh, spoiler Impressive. alert, it's the same book. Um, and uh, that'll well, be- Well, I might add more to that. What? No, <laughs> no I'm cutting you off. You've had enough. Uh, and we'll be doing that on December 3rd uh, at Evanston Public Library for the public. Uh, you might want to reserve a slot because maybe a. it'll yeah. attend it. You might, might fill up. And so. you can always email like us, like um, I'm Brian Wilson. It's bwilson at cityofevanston.org, all lowercase. Mm -hmm. And then- I'm E Bird. B I R D yeah. at cityofevanston.org. Yeah. If, you if you have any questions or if you're like, what was that book you were talking about? Because I uh, didn't quite catch the name. Because um, it was at the beginning before I figured out how to do the comments. So, thank you so much for yeah. watching and thank you yeah, for being yeah, part of this. Thanks for watching. And Betsy, thanks again. No problem. Thank Yay. you, Brian. This was fun. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.